Jared Goff here on 97 won the ticket. And uh, as always, thanks for joining us. And uh, I mean, let's call it what it was. Last year, we had to do some tough interviews. This is going to be about as much fun as we've had. That was one heck of an offense. Yeah. Right. yeah. That was one heck of a performance. We are not used to that in Detroit, especially what we saw in the first half. Did it feel like yeah. offensively, defensively, special teams just clicking on all cylinders? Yeah, it's a, it's a team game. And whenever you know the defense is playing the way they were, it, it, it alleviates pressure for us and vice versa. So, um, you know, they, they're giving us, some, giving us some short fields. You know, the safety certainly shifted some momentum after we didn't score there. Um, so, yeah, it's a team game. You know, we're not always going to be perfect on offense, and they picked us up in some areas as, as well as we did for them, and, and that's what happens when good teams come together. It's early, but you've been on an offense that made a run to the Super Bowl and, and, and all. Is this feeling like it might be the most complete unit you've ever been in charge of as a quarterback? Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's week two, man. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, had, a, we had a good game. I mean, we played well, but uh, certainly a lot of work to do and, and certainly have a lot of uh, – a lot of areas of improvement um, I know for myself in our past game, and then I'm, I'm sure the O-line has, has their areas they want to improve on. But, yeah, I think, you know, we, we, we certainly have a high standard for ourselves and, and, and have, a, um, have a high ceiling, I think. You know, we've got, we've got good talent and, and good coaches and can do some pretty special things, but uh, there is a lot of uh, room for improvement for sure. He, he just told me to tap. I, I know, really, like tap the brakes. Easy, Doug. Slow down. Uh, I imagine that some plays uh, as a quarterback, when you get the play from the offensive coordinator, that just puts a smile on your face because you know the play's going to work. You've seen what the defense is, is offering up. You hear the call. You're loving it. Was the jet sweep to St. Brown where he went for 58 yep. yards, one of them? Yeah, exactly. It's funny. It's exactly what happened. Um, he, he That call came in. I said, oh, yeah, here we go. And, and it would be a big play. And, um, again, it was one that Ben, I, I, you know, we'd worked on for a while. And, he was just kind of waiting for the right time to do it, and, and it was the perfect time for it. Sw- switch some momentum back in our favor, and um, it was it was sweet, man. It was a good play. How difficult is the timing on a play like that to work on and practice? Because I mean, it happens seamlessly. The, the guy's running in motion. You have to snap the ball and turn just at the same time that he's behind you. Who is it harder on, the receiver, or is it harder on the quarterback with the timing of that whole thing? You know, it's it's really not as as difficult as it, as it may look. You know, it's. Uh, we run those motions all the time, um, and we only handed it to him once. It uh, doesn't mean we can't hand it to him more now, but uh, it, it, the timing of it, I, I snap it a little bit earlier if I'm going to hand it to him, and I snap it a little bit later if I'm not. Uh, it's really not that difficult. And then and there's sometimes where I'll snap it earlier and not give it to him. And so it's just I'm just messing around with the timing of it, but St. Brown's got a good feel for it. The other play call that just seemed to be perfect was the touchdown pass to DeAndre Swift against a blitz. Take us through that from when you looked over the defense to the very end. Did you know right away again, this this is going to work. I just need to get the ball out. Um, you know, I, I didn't. They, they were they were in a, a different coverage. They were in um, some sort of cover zero blitz where they're, they're bringing everybody and somebody should be covering Swift and they didn't. Um, I don't know who, whose responsibility that would be, but when I saw them kind of bring everybody, I knew that that was where the ball had to go because nobody was on Swift and um, yeah, in, in my head, once that once the ball was snapped, I knew okay, just get him the ball and, and let him work. Did I know he was going to make three people miss and score? No, but um, you know that, that kid's a special player, and anytime we get the ball in space to him, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, as a quarterback, while this is going on in the first half, are you able to watch any of the domination the defense is putting forth, or are you too busy on the sidelines, you know, going over the tablets and looking at formations and plays and talking things? Oh, over? Yeah. We- we weren't on the sidelines very long, so we noticed that for sure. It was a lot of three and outs early on, and uh, we, we felt that momentum, and um, it, it was fun, man. It was really good to see them and see what they were doing, Hutchinson making those plays and, and some of the tackles on the back end. I thought we tackled so well, man, and, and I thought our defense just came ready to play. It was really fun to be a part of. And, and then even our punt return stuff, you know, getting us short fields and the safety return was huge. Um, but, yeah, those guys played well, and we could feel their momentum and their juice. And, you know, we scored 22 in the first half and, and really felt like it could have been a whole lot more than that and really could have blown that game open if we if we were really clicking. You uh, you guys had to replace the middle of the offensive line, yeah. and I know you've talked about it a ton, but, you know, with a day to digest it and watch film, the the guys up front, Stenberg and Brown and Skipper, what, what what more can we say about the job that they did? Because when people heard the middle of your old line was out, they thought, oh, boy, this is going to be a mess. And it wasn't. They were great. Yeah. No, I'm just super proud of those guys, man. It's it's not, you know, they haven't had very many opportunities in the NFL. I mean, Evan played quite a bit last year, but 
those other two guys, you know, it's very limited opportunities. And going against the the front that we were going against last week, they're, they're no slouch, man. They're one of the better fronts in the NFL. And um, what they were able to do was was really cool. I think especially with Skipper, right, with his first game. And um, you know, we can say he played hard, and you know, he he knew what he was doing, but he played damn well, man. He played really well and was where he was supposed to be, and and did a really good job. So. Um, it's 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 looking good for him, and and hopefully continue to keep going. How difficult is it to throw the ball to the left when you got twin towers <laughs> out there on the left side? I mean, Skipper's six nine. What's Decker? Six 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 seven? Something yeah, he's like that. Probably six seven or so. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't really notice it. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mulkey, I'm pretty tall too. So uh, Skipper's got to be the tallest guard ever, though. I would imagine. <laughs> All right, I said something on the air yesterday, and I said I'd bring it up with you, and I'd be interested to get your thoughts. Through two weeks, no offense has scored more points than the Detroit Lions, and yet I still feel like you guys even left points on the field. Do you have that feeling, even though you right. are as at leading the NFL in points scored for an offense? Yeah, I, I, I certainly feel that way. I think I said it two weeks in a row. Like We, we kind of could have blown that game wide open last week, and or th- this past week, and then two weeks ago, you know, I felt like we could have scored 50 Um with just some of the stuff we left on the field, and, and you guys saw it out there. You know, we just missed on that uh, double pass to DJ down the end zone. I just missed him on the ball right before half. Um, we're so close on a couple of those balls down the field, and so close on some of these runs that are going to pop. Um, it, it'll really open our, our whole uh, you know offense back up to you know really the standard that we have. And I know we've been playing well and we've been doing some good things, but um, with that being said, I, I think there's you know it's a good feeling of of. Uh, you know, kind of pissed offness of like, oh man, we still have some stuff left out there, and I think Ben's been doing a great job, you know, setting that standard for us, and and we've been following. I think the one thing that I thought was most significant to come out of that game is you guys get out to the big lead. It looks like you might roll them, but they come back and they put the heat on. And offensively, you guys have to respond. Now in Detroit, we're kind of accustomed to that's when the the lug nuts come off and the wheels fly off and the, and the Lions find a way to lose, which led to the term same old Lions. You guys were yeah, you guys stop you guys gotta stop talking like that. We do. We do. Stop, if you stop, well, stop, if you guys, putting that, stop putting that in the air, you know? If you if you guys respond like that though, and that's the thing, <laughs> is they put the pressure on and you guys responded offensively twice. It, it felt yeah. like you guys were like, okay, we need to we need to answer. Talk about having that deep down inside because it's something that we could get used to. <laughs> right. So well, yeah, no, 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 you should, but uh it's it, it, you know, they threw us a couple good punches, and we threw one right back, and that's what good teams do, and um, we're becoming that. You know, are we there yet? No, absolutely not. We're one and one through two weeks, but um, I think that was a good step in the right direction of, of facing a little bit of adversity there in the middle of the game, and our defense, you know, giving up two touchdowns there, and our offense kind of stumbling for a few drives, and then, okay, guys, get our feet back underneath us and go make some plays, and, and we did that, and then our defense stood tall again and just kind of bounced back in all areas, and um, you know, I think that whole uh, narrative and, and whatnot that you're talking about, um, you know, we're, we're not talking about it. So I don't know if you guys should either. So, and I, I know I'm busting your balls a little bit, but uh, <laughs> we've heard it, it. It, it's, it's, it's something that uh, you know, it, it's not it's not how we feel about anything around here. Speaking of punches, uh, you're facing a team in Minnesota that probably not happy after what happened last night against Philadelphia. I don't know if you had a chance to watch that game as it's unfolding last night or not, but heading into a road game against a team that just comes off a loss like they did, would you rather face a team like that or face a team that is coming off a big win? You know, it, it, it typically doesn't matter. I know it's like a, you know, you don't want to play a pissed off team or you don't want to play a team that's riding high or whatever, but um, it typically doesn't matter. And uh, I've got a lot of respect for Kevin O'Connell and, and all those coaches over there, I know them well and know they'll have their team ready to play. So we'll be ready to go, and uh, it'll be a big game for everyone. Have you noticed any difference in fan interaction when you're out and about over the last couple months compared to like a year ago? Uh, yeah, you know, not really. The, the, the fans around here are so supportive and so genuine, and, and they care so deeply about the team. And even even when things were really bad last year, it was still so supportive and still, um, you know, at least in person every time I had to, you know, an interaction with anybody who was so supportive and so uh, friendly. Uh, I had to ask you this because watching games over the weekend, do you get a chance to see highlights of other games or no? Uh, occasionally. Okay, yeah, so I, I, I'm hoping maybe you saw this because I have to ask the question about the two quarterbacks. Which is more impressive? Watching Josh Allen flip a pass at 100 miles an hour, 50 yards down the field, or watching Kyler Murray <laughs> run around for 20 seconds and make the play happen at the end? You know, they're both great players. Um, I don't know if I saw – I saw Josh play last night. 
Um, but I don't know if I saw Kyler play. I think he was finishing up right when we were done. But, um, you know, Josh is playing at such a high level right now, man. It's really cool to see. And uh, the, his ability both in the run game and pass game is so damn good. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll play him on Thanksgiving and hopefully he slows down by then. But he's, he's a damn good player, as is Kyler. Well, before we get into something that you're unveiling today, what are some keys to the Vikings game that, that are going to be big for you guys? Because it's on the road, hostile environment, first time, and as you man, mentioned, maybe a mad opponent. So what are some keys to this one? Yeah, just, just handling the noise and handling our communication and, and, and staying focused. I think uh, that'll be the biggest thing. It'll be our first road game um, with this new offense and being able to communicate um, in, that, in that way that we need to is going to be important. And, and you know, they're, they're going to be loud. It'll be fun atmosphere. But as long as we're communicating and, and focused and, and on the same page, we should be just fine. All right, so during Hard Knocks, we saw you with some students at the Detroit Lions Academy with a, the JG16 program and the, um, the, the T-shirt designs. And you, is, is the unveil today? Is that actually happening today? Yeah, so the, what, we, what you saw in Hard Knocks was um, the collaboration I did with the FATE program and my brand, JG16. Um, we're selling the clothes at uh, JG16.store and, and all the proceeds, plus I'll match whatever the proceeds are. Um, so proceeds times two basically goes back to the kids for their scholarship fund for college. Um, and today is actually something separate. It is actually what um, what my JG16 partnered with last year, which is the Detroit Lions Academy. Um, and we built this what's called a STEAM lab, which is like a creative center for the kids. And um, the same exact thing as we did doing this year. We sold clothes. Whatever the proceeds were, I matched that and that money plus the NFLPA's money went straight to uh, Detroit Lions Academy for the STEAM lab. So it is unveiled today. I haven't seen it. I'm super excited. I'm going to go down there in a couple hours and hang out with the kids and check it out. And, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be really fun. And, and then hopefully we can continue to grow the brand and um, help the kids with the FATE program as well this year. So this is a kind of a cool program. From what I understand, it helps to keep the kids engaged and keep them on the right path to stay in school. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the Steam Lab specifically is is so cool because it it provides kids a, a space to be creative and to learn about science and to learn about art and and learn about building things and um, different different areas of of you know learning that you typically don't get in like standard you know school you know where you're sitting there learning from a book you get to create things and that's really the the whole reason behind it. Uh, JG sixteen dot store uh, for people who want to buy the gear it. and. Uh, we appreciate it, Jared, and uh, nice start. We look forward to uh, doing this again next week. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jared. There he is, Jared Goff, quarterback, Detroit Lions. <laughs> well, you're in the hot seat a little bit, huh? I don't mind. Huh. But it's it's cool, though, because he's – like that whole thing, they hate the term same old No, lines. it's you legit, can tell. man. They, they're they trying to change that culture. They don't, they want to squash it. I like what he said. We don't even put it in the air. Yeah. I like it. Don't give it oxygen. That was a, that was a sh- shut up, Doug. That's what I got.